in Africa. Um, you see uh, victims taking up uh, his principles. And in, the, in, the, in that struggle, court after court has said that the obligation of a country um, to investigate the worst atrocities um, cannot be extinguished uh, by an amnesty law or by the passage of time. And in, in, in Spain, of course, as you mentioned, Spain is a country that is littered uh, with mass graves from the Franco era. And over the last several years, a movement has grown up of, of, of the children and the grandchildren of victims asking what happened uh, to those people. And they filed complaints in Spanish courts. And so, and, and Garcon took up those complaints. And, and the irony here, of course, is that he is being prosecuted uh, in Spain for trying to apply the very principles uh, that he so successfully promoted internationally. Um, and so his investigation uh, was not only overturned on appeal, which would be uh, bad enough, um, but as you mentioned, these right-wing groups then actually charged that he'd committed a crime uh, by uh, carrying out the investigation. And um, unfortunately, the judiciary in, in Spain is, is, remains very conservative. Um, Garcon has made enemies on both the right and the left. Um, uh, most recently, he, uh, he helped to uncover a massive corruption scandal in the now ruling Popular Party. Um, but he also, uh, when Felipe Gonzalez was uh, president of the government, uh, the socialist, um, he helped to uh, uncover a, 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 a death, death, death squad activity against um, Basque terrorists. So he has a lot of enemies across the board. And this case, which is only one of three cases, actually, um, uh, working their way through uh, against Garcon, are, it seems to be a, a concerted effort by his enemies to cut him down to size. Uh, Reed Brody, uh, Judge Balthazar Garcon spoke to Democracy Now! Uh, last year when he was in New York to receive the first Abraham Lincoln Brigade Archives Puffin Award for Human Rights Activism. He talked precisely about the paradox of Spain pursuing a ca case against him. Esa es la contradicción y la paradoja de una situación en la que eh, España ha sido pionera en la jurisdicción universal. Uh, this is the, uh, the paradox and the irony of a situation in which Spain has been a uh, pioneer in the application of uh, universal jurisdiction. Y, y cuando se trata de uh, analizar y de investigar los hechos propios, uh, se uh, niega a hacerlo y se procesa al juez. Yet when, um, when uh, Spain, uh, when it actually comes to investigating the, the case and the facts of the case in Spain, uh, the country uh, denies access to the facts and uh, puts the judge himself on trial. I think it's an obligation of every judge to investigate those hechos and give protection to the victims, truth, justice, and reparation. Um, it is the obligation of a judge to um, investigate the cases and to um, search for truth, justice, and reparation for the victims of these crimes. Judge Garcon also explained why the crimes of the Franco regime cannot be absolved by an amnesty law. This is the contradiction and the paradox that they do not want to investigate the crimes of the Franquism and who they want to investigate. Um, the paradox, again, is that um, the government refuses to investigate uh, the crimes against humanity and, and at the same time is prosecuting the, the judge who wants to uncover them. Entre, entre 150.000 y 200.000 personas uh, desaparecieron. There were between 150,000 and 200,000 people disappeared under the Franco Como regime. Población civil. As part of the civil population. Esas desapariciones todavía siguen sin mm, determinar dónde está el paradero de las víctimas. Um, it's still not known where the victims lie buried. Es un delito permanente y por tanto no puede estar amparado por ninguna amnistía. It's a permanent crime and therefore it, is, it cannot be absolved by uh, an amnesty law. That was Judge Garçon speaking to Democracy Now! Uh, last year here in New York. Uh, to see the full interview, please go to our website at democracynow.org. Uh, Reed Brody, can you uh, talk a little bit about the, the, the idea of universal jurisdiction and amnesty law?
Well, universal jurisdiction is the principle that some crimes are so heinous um, that every state has the right and often the duty um, to prosecute uh, the perpetrators. And that was the principle uh, by which a Spanish judge um, could investigate crimes committed in Chile or, for that matter, crimes um, committed against Guantanamo. In Guantanamo, as you mentioned, the only case um, or one of the only cases that is open uh, for the alleged crimes of the Bush administration uh, in its counterterrorism policies um, is the investigation that Judge Garcon opened uh, in, in, in Spain and has been continued by another judge. In fact, two weeks ago, um, I was called. Uh, and I will be going to testify uh, before a Spanish judge based on Human Rights Watch's uh, reporting on, uh, on, on the Bush administration's counterterrorism policies. Now, the question of amnesty, um, you know, many, con many countries, and in fact, it goes together with universal jurisdiction, because universal jurisdiction is international law's answer. Um, to the spectacle of tyrants and torturers who cover themselves at home with amnesties. And so the Pinochet case began. Of course, Pinochet was in Chile. He was protected by his own amnesty. He went to England, um, and uh, Judge Garcon indicted him. But, but fortunately, by the time uh, uh, General Pinochet went back to Spain, um, judges in uh, went back to Chile. Judges in Chile found a way around that amnesty with, using the same argument that uh, that Baltazar Garcon is using in Spain, which is that people who are disappeared and who remain disappeared until today, those are continuing crimes. So an amnesty that was passed 15, 20, 30 years ago um, does not uh, uh, bar crimes that continue today. And as long as those uh, relatives are, are in mass graves, nobody knows what happened to them, um, they can still be investigated despite an amnesty that was passed a long time ago. Reed Brody, before we turn to Haiti in the last few minutes of the broadcast, because we want to talk about baby Dr. Valier, I wanted to ask you quickly about his attempt to bring Bush administration um, officials to justice around torture. Well, there were cases, there were four Spanish uh, residents and nationals in Guantanamo and who are actually being, he was actually prosecuting them for, for crimes connected to terrorism. Um, but when he learned about what was happening to them, um, he asserted jurisdiction and then the Center for Constitutional Rights and the European Center for, Con for uh, Constitutional and Human Rights filed cases in Spain. And so there is an investigation now underway in the Spanish uh, courts uh, looking at uh, the uh, responsibility of U.S. officials related not just to Guantanamo, but um, to the whole uh, uh, policy of, of mistreatment of detainees. And um, that investigation, we know now from WikiLeaks that both the Bush administration, but also the Obama administration, were putting pressure on Spain, first of all, to get Judge Garcon off that investigation, um, but also on the state prosecutor to come out against the investigation, as, as he did.